the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We all have our own personal traditions, things that have been taught to us from even a young age. It doesn't matter if you consider yourself more traditional or not. Traditions are just a part of life. You can't avoid making traditions, nor should you try. So it is with the church as well. The church has passed down many traditions over the ages that were meant to help us learn and grow in faith. Some traditions were unique to individual churches, while others bind several churches together. For traditions can be something as simple as how we choose to greet one another, to something as complex as how we worship. Thus, we must be aware how much we lose if we were to betray our tradition. We must not hand over traditions to the garbage heap, lest we know for certain the meaning and purpose behind it. The reality is, these are two sides of the same coin, tradition and betrayal. For these two words come from the exact same Greek word, which is to hand over. Tradition is nothing more than a handing over to the next generation the wisdom gained in life. It's a passing down of a certain way of life. Things like manners, hobbies, careers, and so on. Of course, betrayal is the exact opposite. It's a handing over of things once held dear. It's a complete disregard for the past generations and their contributions which directly impact our life. Tonight, as we enter the upper room, we see both of these taking place, tradition and betrayal. For as Jesus will be betrayed this night by one of his very own disciples, he seeks to hand over or tradition to the disciples something far greater. When it comes to the traditions of the church, we must be aware of their ultimate purpose. For thus we learn tonight, Jesus is handed over into your hands. It was the very tradition of Israel that brought about this night for it was according to tradition that Jesus would come with his disciples to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. This was the annual celebration of God delivering Israel out of slavery in Egypt. This had been handed down throughout the generations so that Israel would remember all that God had done for them. Of course, it was important for Israel to remember their roots, where they came from, their own history. But this Jesus would teach to his disciples. He would hand over to them the traditions of Israel in their truest form. But tonight would be different from the years past. Jesus knew what was about to happen this night even as he told his disciples at the table. Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. In just a few hours' time, Jesus would be handed over to sinful men. He would be betrayed by his own disciple. In reality, Judas had betrayed more than just Jesus. He would hand over more than just Jesus to the Romans. Even as Jesus would say concerning him, the Son of Man goes as it, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Jesus, Judas would lose every part of himself in this betrayal. 
For he had tossed all tradition, all meaning of his life out the window. For what? Thirty pieces of silver. Let us not think that we're innocent of even the sin of Judas. For in his betrayal, he traded Jesus for himself. He treated his own self, his own worth, his present life as far more important than Jesus in the wisdom of the ages. But isn't this what we all do in our own sin? Yes, in our sin, we betray Jesus just as Judas did. We treat ourselves as the most important thing, handing over to sinful men all that was given to us, the wisdom of the ages, even the very word of God. And think about what it means that Jesus was betrayed into the hands of sinful men. For these were men who had little care for the traditions of Israel. These were men who cared for nothing other than themselves. These were men who, for their own enjoyment, would inflict upon Jesus the greatest torture and agony anyone could suffer. So Jesus said, Woe, woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Woe to us who have sinned and handed over our Lord to sinful men. Of course, this night is all about the handing over. But it's not the handing over of betrayal. For there was another handing over that happened on this night, for which we must remember. Jesus on this night would institute a new feast. He would hand over a new tradition to his disciples. In this, his last supper, Jesus would hand over himself to his disciples. He would tradition his very own body and blood. Just as we read from Matthew, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. I understand it wasn't Judas who was handing over Jesus. Rather, Jesus goes of his own accord. He willingly hands himself over into the hands of these sinful men places into our hands his own body and blood. For Jesus is our tradition. He is what we seek to hand over from generation to generation, just as he handed himself over to us. For yes, Judas is the one who betrays Jesus. This much is true. It was Judas who brings the guards to arrest Jesus in the garden. It was Jesus who gives all of himself to you. Jesus hands himself over to his Father and his will that our sinful hands may be cleansed. For this is the tradition of our faith. This is what has been handed over to me, that I may even hand it over to you. But Jesus gave himself up to be arrested, tortured, beaten, mocked, and scorned by sinful men. He gave himself up to be abandoned and rejected by his own heavenly Father. Jesus gave himself up, handing himself over to the cross dying for the sins of the whole world, that you may be given forgiveness through his own body and blood. 
On this night, Jesus places into your hands his very own body and blood shed for you on the cross. So take, eat, take, drink, drink of his blood, eat of his body, that you may be nourished and strengthened in faith. For such is the purpose of our tradition, such is the purpose of our faith, that Christ in his sacrifice for you may grant you the forgiveness of your sins. By forgiveness, so may they also grant you life, eternal salvation. For this tradition we received as of first importance, and on this night, when our Lord was betrayed, he handed himself over to you, sacrificing himself on the cross for all of your sins. And now, through this meal, we may grow in forgiveness, grace, and the eternal life which he has won for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.